Hi everybody, this is the video for 7-7, .7, imaginary numbers. So for number one, you had to remember when you're solving an equation with a radical, the way you undo the radical is by squaring both sides. And you finish solving, you get x equals 24. For all of these types of problems, it is really important that you double check your answer. So I'm going to do that right here. And my answer is correct. So x equals 24 is a solution. For number 2, same idea. We are going to square both sides to get rid of the square root. Just remember when you square both sides, you need to put parentheses around the x minus 1, which means you are going to have to FOIL it out. So this becomes x squared minus 2x plus 1. I just did FOIL or box method if you prefer. And remember, if you have an equation with an x squared in it, um, this is when you have to set your equation equal to 0 and factor. So I'm going to subtract 2x and subtract 6 from both sides. And this is a magic x problem. Then you need to take each factor separately and set it equal to zero. I'll move it up. Sorry, x plus one. So I get x equals five and x equals negative one. And now we need to double check both of those answers. So we have five minus one. So since we get a statement that is always true, x equals 5 is an answer. Let's try negative 1. Oops. Negative 1 minus 1. So here you might already notice that the square root of 4 is not negative 2. Um, actually, the square root of any number can never be a negative. Um, so, x equals negative 1 is not a solution. And x equals 5 is your only solution. And for number 3, um, just like you can undo a square root by squaring it, you can undo a square by taking the square root. Um, but we know that you cannot take the square root of a negative number. Well, at least not yet. So our answer here is no solution. So today what we are going to talk about is actually this problem of taking the square root of a negative number. And we came up with a way to get around that because it happens so often, and this is um, with something we call imaginary numbers. So I want to point out that the name says a lot about um, what it is. It is not a real number. It's an imaginary number. It's just a way to represent it, okay? So since it happens so often, mathematicians decided that if you see the square root of negative 1, we're just going to call that i. Okay, so it's important to know the four powers of i. And it is a little bit tricky. So i, of course, is just i, or the square root of negative 1. i squared is negative 1. Here's the reasoning behind that. If you have the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, even though this is kind of against the rules, it is the same number. Here's your group of 2, so it's negative 1. But once again, these are imaginary numbers, and they do kind of break the rules. Okay? 
So if you have i cubed, it becomes negative i. Hi. Hi, George. And here's the reasoning behind that. If I know that i is just i, which we just decided right here, and i squared is negative 1, which we already decided right here. If I have i times i squared, that's i cubed, right? So we know that i times negative 1 is just negative i. Okay, so it's a little bit abstract. It's actually a lot abstract. Um, but once you get used to it, their imaginary numbers are very useful. And now let's talk about i to the fourth power. So think about it like this. i to the fourth power is just i squared times i squared, right? And we know that i squared is negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Okay, another way you could think about it is a group of 4. So if I have i to the 4th, that's like saying it's like saying square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1. Okay, so it's square root, so we're looking for groups of 2, so negative 1 comes out front, and another negative 1 comes out front, and negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Okay? Um, however you remember it, it is important to know this pattern because it repeats. So it always goes i, negative 1, negative i, negative i positive 1. So what I mean by it repeating is that when you go to x to the fifth, or i to the fifth power, it comes back to here. So this is also i to the fifth, i to the sixth, i to the seventh, i to the eighth. And then it repeats again, i to the ninth, so on and so forth. So if you can remember those, those first four, you'll know all of the powers of i. So if we want to express in terms of i, the first thing that I want you to do when you see a negative number inside your radical is take out the i. So think about it like this. Negative 4 is just 4 times negative 1, right? And we know that the square root of negative 1, well, we call it i. So that square root of negative 1 puts an i out front. So we have i square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is just 2, so it's 2i. But the first thing I want you to do is take out that i before you simplify anything else. So for number 2, I have negative square root of negative 3, which is just 3 times negative 1. We know that the square root of negative 1 is i, so I put an i out front, negative i. And since we cannot simplify square root of 3, this is my answer. Okay? And let's try um, number 3. So remember, the first thing I want you to do is take out that negative. Square root of negative 1 is i. And then from here, we still need to simplify. So I'm going to do a little factor tree. So I have i square root of 2 times 2 times 3. Since it's a square root, I'm looking for my groups of 2. And it comes out front. So this is just 2i root 3. So this is really just like simplifying any other radical. It's just the first step you should do is to take out the negative 1. Okay? And... The time when a lot of people forget this is when you're multiplying. 
So whenever you see a negative inside your radical, just remember, take that out first. When you're multiplying i's, though, or a term with i, treat it just like a regular, like a variable, okay? Think of it as like 3 times 2x. It would just be 6x. So likewise, 3 times 2i is just 6i, okay? 5 square root of 2 times square root of 10. Remember, the very first thing I want you to do is take out the negative, or the i. So the square root of negative 1 is i. Okay, and then you can multiply your radicands. So I have 2 times 10. The reason I didn't say that's 20 is because I knew that I was going to need to factor it out anyways. So I have i root 2 times 2 times 5. Here's my group of 2, so it comes out front. So it's 2i root 5. And then remember, take out your radicals or take out the i before you multiply. These are the type of problems where people forget that. Okay? So I'm going to write these with the negatives. So this becomes an i out front. So i root 2 times i root 3. Okay, so now we treat this just like multiplying any other radi radicals. Remember, if you have coefficients, multiply them first. i times i is i squared, okay, and root 2 times root 3 is root 6. Now here it goes back to those patterns that you need to know, okay. We have to know that i squared is negative 1. So we want to simplify this as negative 1 root 6, which of course is just negative root 6. So just like you simplify radicals, you also need to simplify your i values as much as you can.